before doing additional examples, I want to look at the actual wording of the integral test theorem. Um, basically, what you're doing is you're relating your series equation to a continuous positive decreasing function. Um, usually, it's going to be in an interval from 1 to infinity, although it could go from 2 to infinity or something like that as well. And you're going to be using that related function. Uh, you can take the integral from whatever your starting point is to infinity. If that integral is convergent, then the series is also going to be convergent. If your integral is divergent, the series will be divergent. Again, a reminder, the integral is not going to give you the sum of the series. It might tell you that the series has a sum that's less than a certain value if it's bounded above, um, but it's not going to tell you the actual sum. Okay, so be careful about making that assumption. We're going to take a look at some more uh, integral test examples. Um, so here's a series 5 over n. Okay, and uh, you can start listing out terms. So you'd have 5 over 1, 5, uh, 5 over 2, 5 over 3, 5 over 4, and so on. You'd be adding those up. Okay, um, a couple of things here. First of all, hopefully you notice this looks kind of familiar, except you've got a 5 here. Uh, remember that with summations, just like with integrals, and in fact the integral rules come from summations, uh, you can factor a constant out. So I would suggest factoring out this 5, okay? Um, if we have a series that's divergent and we multiply it by 5, it's still going to be divergent. Uh, if we have a series that is convergent and we multiply it by 5, it's still going to converge. Um, so that's a, a rule that you definitely can use and, and is definitely very important to be able to simplify things down to things that you recognize. Okay? I hope you recognize that. Okay? That's actually the harmonic. And, and as a result, uh, we actually know what it's going to do, although we'll, we'll hold off on that for just a second. Um, of course, you can always write out a couple terms if you didn't recognize that. It's 1 plus a half plus a third, and so on, okay? Um, and what the integral test says is that you can compare this to a, to a related positive continuous decreasing function. Uh, and, of course, that related function would be f of x equals 1 over x, okay? It's got an asymptote at, uh, at 0. And uh, you can basically... Um, you know, make the comparison to that function. So it's doing that kind of thing. Um, and so you'll have your individual points here. You know, at one, you have a, a functional value of one, uh, two, you have a functional value of one and a half, and then one third, and so on. And like normal, you should check to make sure that this doesn't apply to one of the other tests that we've learned about. Uh, so the nth term test. Uh, as n goes to infinity, do the individual terms approach zero? Yes, which doesn't mean that it converges necessarily but it doesn't force it to diverge. So there's the possibility that it might converge, okay? And again, if you don't recognize this as the harmonic, you might be saying, oh, look, the terms are approaching zero. You know, maybe, maybe this thing will approach some kind of a sum, okay? So the integral test will allow us to verify whether it does or not. Um, so you can take the integral of the related positive decreasing function. Now, technically, we've got this five out here. Um, so maybe I should really be comparing it to the function 5 over x, and I'd be taking the integral of 5 over x uh, between 1 and infinity, okay? And uh, once again, we can factor out the 5 here, okay? That's a regular integral concept, and so we're really going to be looking at that. And um, anyway, we can really just take that integral, and, and we can see how everything works out here. Uh, so hopefully you remember the integral of 1 over x is just the natural log of the absolute value of x, okay? Um, and so that's going to be ln of the absolute value of x. Uh, we're going to be evaluating that between 1 and infinity. Of course, infinity is not a number, so I'm just going to say we're going to evaluate it between 1 and b. And so remember, these are all improper integrals. Uh, we're really taking the limit of this uh, difference, basically, as b approaches infinity is what's really going to be happening here. Okay, so that's going to be the natural log of the absolute value of b minus the uh, natural log of the absolute value of 1 when we substitute those two values in and subtract. Now, the absolute values don't really do anything here. Um, uh, our values are going from 1 to infinity. Uh, 1 is already positive, so we don't need that. Um, and b is going to have to be positive as well, so we don't really need that either. Um, all right, and so anyway, the key here... Um, natural log of 1, of course, is just equal to 0. That's, that's simple to, to evaluate. Um, the natural log function, remember what the natural log function looks like? Natural log function does this sort of thing. It's, it's 0 at 1, 
it goes to infinity. It does it very slowly, but it does go to infinity. And so as B approaches infinity, natural log of, of infinity is going to approach infinity. And as a result, um, this diverges, okay? Um, the, the integral here diverges. Obviously, you're multiplying the integral by five. Five times infinity is still gonna be infinity. Um, so this is a divergent series. And again, a lot of you may have just at the start said, well, duh, <laughs> it's five times the harmonic. Of course it's going to diverge, and that's fine. But what I wanted to show you is you could actually prove that it diverges using the integral test. Okay, so nice example there. Um, let me show you one additional example, uh, and this is actually going to lead into something called P-series in the next section. Um, so I want to look at another function that, that you know, kind of looks like this. Uh, we're going to do 1 over radical n. Okay? And so once again, you may want to substitute in a few terms. Uh, that would be 1 over 1 plus 1 over radical 2 plus 1 over radical 3 and, and so on. And you may look at that and say, well, it kind of looks like a harmonic, so, so maybe it's going to uh, diverge, and, and, and maybe it does. But again, you do want to go through the process and you want to check and see. Um, always apply the nth term test. Are these individual terms going to be approaching um, zero? And yeah, as, as n goes to infinity, this denominator is going to get infinitely large. Individual terms will approach zero, which means there's the possibility that it might converge. It doesn't have to, but it can. Okay, so we're going to compare this to the related function uh, f of x is equal to 1 over radical n. Whoops, sorry, 1 over radical x. Uh, if you graph that, it's a positive function. Um, primary square root has to be positive, principal square root. Um, so it's going to be a, a positive decreasing function as well. Um, so remember the concept here is you're going to take the integral of that related continuous positive decreasing function, okay? Um, that's x to the negative one-half power, okay? So we're going to take the integral of x to the negative one-half power dx, and we're going to see where that works out. So uh, raise your power by one. That becomes x to the one-half power. x to the one-half power, of course, is the same thing as radical x. And you're going to divide by the new power. Uh, the new power is one half. You're dividing by one half, which is the same thing as multiplying by two. So this is going to be the same thing as two radical x. Uh, we're going to be evaluating it between one and infinity. Okay, um, and so we'll substitute that in, and uh, we'll we'll see what ends up happening here. Okay, so <clears throat> in this particular case, uh, this is going to end up being the limit. Really, we should call that infinity b. Limit as b approaches infinity of 2 radical b minus 2 radical 1. And of course, um, that's just a constant value. Okay, as b approaches infinity, uh, this whole thing is going to approach infinity. Okay, so 1 over radical n is also going to diverge. And, and by the way, uh, if, if you think about it, um, these fractions, um, you know, the square root of 2 is a little bit smaller than 2, okay? Uh, if you have a fraction with a smaller denominator, the fraction terms are actually bigger. So this fraction is actually uh, a little bit bigger than the terms. Each of these fractions are a little bit bigger, actually, than the terms of the harmonic that we just looked at a minute ago that diverged. So if that diverges and we have terms that are bigger than the terms of another series that diverges, uh, it's also going to diverge, which is the comparison test, which we'll talk about down the road. But uh, that's the big idea here. So anyway, uh, hopefully a couple of those examples are helpful. Just in general, if you don't see that it's geometric, if you don't see that it's harmonic or a, a multiple of a harmonic, uh, if it's a function that you can integrate easily, the integral test is a great way to see if a series converges or diverges. It's also really nice because it'll show you both, whereas a lot of these tests only rule out one possibility and not the other. So hopefully that's helpful in understanding the integral test.